We ready to save Varroa? Fox received a recording from his source. I, I'm not sure, but I think it could help. What is it? Play the recording. All right, well, welcome back to Tom Clancy's. Well, you know this is his break point. Let's go ahead and continue with our next story mission into the Wolf's Den. Genius. What's this thing keeping people in Aurora? The drone perimeter. We're calling it Operation Citadel. I think Walker came up with the name. Any weak spots? The perimeter is made up of different interlocking sectors, and each sector has its own drone swarm. Each swarm is managed by an AI that runs through a local relay terminal. I can see that system working for surveillance, but it took out my chopper without firing a shot. The swarms, they... They're made up of dozens of miniature drones that act in unison, like a flock. You made an artificial bird strike. No. We made artificial birds to do the job of bees. Pollination. It's Stone and Walker who militarized our swarms to create a deadly shield perimeter. Who thinks like that? People after power. Skeletech needs to start thinking more like its clients. How well did you know Walker? Well, we fixed things together. He was a military advisor brought in after the Skeletech bombing. We were still in mourning for the friends we lost. And then this hero shows up. He was... he was magnetic. Charismatic, you know? Like a... TV star or something. Yeah. That guy could charm the fleas off a dog. He kind of changed after he left the unit. He never spoke about it. Well, it's top secret. Let's just say it wasn't pretty. I suppose you got tricked into inviting private military contractors into Aurora. Well, I mean... not exactly. We're self-governing. You used to be. Okay, we used to be. We needed security. Not just as a police force, but as security. At least that's what Miles got me to finally admit. Against pirates and the mole men and such? Our drone security was limited. It still is. If unauthorized people land, we would know about it, but we couldn't do anything about it. You're obviously not afraid of squatters. You were afraid of corporate spies. We do get spies from time to time. Don't tell the shareholders, but the more our tech discoveries are disseminated throughout the world, the better off it'll be. But I was worried about the safety of our staff, the bombing. I just never imagined the antibiotics would be more deadly than the illness. Sentinel snuck a private army into the abandoned U.S. military complexes. Stone's been planning this takeover from day one. My colleague, Ayana Puri, who dealt with this, certainly has a better picture. This guy, Trey Stone, doesn't make things easy. He always seemed kind of... ambitious. He and Walker always had some friction. Walker mentioned Stone before, but never in a friendly way. I take it he isn't very likable. He's a creep. But I've had to work with all kinds of people before. Sometimes you tolerate jerks just because they get the job done. Did he get the job done? I don't actually know. He kind of insulated himself. As a subcontractor, I couldn't supervise him the way I did other people. I had to trust Walker when he said things were going well. Fox called you his best friend. Yeah, I never thought about it, but I guess he's mine too. Times like this, you can count your real friends on one hand. Have you known him a while? Your buddy from college or something? No. A few years ago, I hired him as a consultant. He was working on the problem P versus NP. That literally means nothing to me. It's a math problem. One of the math problems. But Fox was just so enthusiastic about everything, I widened the scope of his role. He was involved in every non-military project Skeltech had. He's a good guy to have around. Absolutely. Hey, what's the deal with this chick on all the video screens? Ayana Puri. Yeah, my CFO. I guess she's just, uh, fulfilling her regular job duties, sharing the company news. 
Yeah. Did you see the one where she said I was crazy? Having a mental breakdown or something? It's not a bad propaganda campaign. She's not as smart as she thinks she is. Her strategies were always traditional. She's never had any real vision. So why keep her? She seems so genuinely concerned about the employee's welfare. Now I see she's just playing office politics. She's more clever than smart. She's effectively taken over as CEO. Hmm. Hey, did Fox tell you who his inside source might be? Now, I don't want to press him. I'm not even 100% that he has one. But if that source gets into trouble, he could need someone to help out. He hasn't told me. And I doubt he would respond well to a man with a gun asking him the question. Hey, you don't have to tell me. Just as long as you know. I don't know. And it's not like him to be quiet about anything. I mean, the things that guy told me about his ex-wife? It was like listening to a guy describe a squid eating a chocolate birthday cake. Nobody needs to hear that. Hmm. So if he is keeping the secret, it must be pretty big. Must be. The Omega Project. Wow, this is a lot of conversation here. I don't think I've heard of the Omega Project. Hey, genius. I always thought you were more of a pacifist. Gotta say, though, it's a damn shame you had to start making lethal drones. I was naive, I guess. I was hope for the best out of people, you know? But a bomb goes off and I meet the wrong person at the worst time. I bought their logic that if you want peace, carry a big stick line of reasoning. Stone even said, doesn't God have his avenging angels guarding the gates of paradise? I never felt right here. We're building heaven on earth. And we're not gods. Is that why you kept the secret, Project Omega? Because, you know, some people might look at it as a PR shield keeping the image of a pacifist while making money on weapons. PR is important, but you don't wear a seatbelt because you're planning to get into a car crash, right? You have to be cautious. <sighs> right. That outcast bombing must have hit you pretty hard. I... Maybe you read about it. I lost my wife in the September 11th attack on the World Trade Center. Sorry. I didn't know. I guess, uh, I guess I can't blame you for bringing in Stone and Sentinel. Do you know what it feels like to lose someone? Yeah, I do. You get all torn up inside. You get to feel like you're falling, but it's an endless fall. You grab hold of anything you can. So what am I grabbing hold of now? I don't know. Us. We need you, Nomad. But you probably need us every bit as much. Hey, I've been hearing about that World 2.0 stuff. And maybe the world needs a software patch, but a utopia? Really? People out there and the rest of the world, they think the Earth's dying. They have this belief in scarcity. They think that we'll run out of energy, out of space, or out of water, or anything. And that makes every day a crisis. And World 2.0 would fix that crisis? It was more about fixing that mentality. I wanted to show the rest of the world that with innovation, with creativity, and with a little courage, it's easy to see the universe is abundant. And how about now? It's still an abundant universe. That hasn't changed. Just, I thought I could keep out jealous people and the cowards. No getting away from them. No. I'm probably not as brave as I want to be either. How did you buy Aroa in the first place? I didn't buy it. I leased it. Aroa was technically part of New Zealand, but the U.S. had leased it for years. Yeah. That's why there's the old naval station. But wouldn't it have been easier to rent a chunk of California or something? I'm sure there's a big stretch of Mojave that nobody wants. Yeah. The abandoned naval station here piqued our interest initially, hoping we could piggyback on the Cold War infrastructure. That was a wash. But once we had visited Aroa, its biodiversity won us over. Good Hope Mountain has ice, Infinity is surrounded by fields, and the swamps of Finn Bog sport as harsh a conditions as any good drone tester could wish for. We fell in love with the place. I bought the lease from the U.S. government. 
And now these are your islands. No government but Skeltech. Well, avoiding government regulation was a factor. Oh, I'll bet it was. Oh, I'm getting to learn everything that I always wanted to know about this game and the story, but was afraid to ask. I met a lot of Skeltech employees who were mad at you. The outcasts? Sentinel hasn't taken care of them yet? Yeah, they are idiots. They're idiots. But right now, they have resources and personnel that we need. So we have to work with them? For now. But I'm not getting too attached. You healed up from the bombing attack? I mean, in your head? Yeah, well... I had to deal with the aftermath. First team to inspect the site. I still remember all those broken windows, shattered shards of glass. I kept thinking, we can fix those, we can fix those. I got the windows fixed, but... But I stopped scheduling non-vital meetings in the Skell Foundation head office. It's different than when you see something on TV. It's... It's just reporters and sirens. It's... The smell, so acrid it singes your nostrils, like the energy around you has been sucked away, you know? Yeah, I do. And the bombers were never caught. We never knew if another one was coming. We suspected the outcast, but now that Sentinel's taken over, I wonder. You're the one who asked Sentinel to step in. Yeah, that's, that's on me. Hmm. All right, let's talk about Paula. I need more about Paula Madeira. How long have you known her? Years. I hired her right out of grad school. Actually, she was still in grad school. She was only 20, but she was just so smart. I knew that with her, I could lay the foundation of Skeltech's advanced drone program. But are you friends? Was there something else going on or what? There's something here I'm missing. I think hiring her so young, she never really learned the art of adapting. She didn't like working with Walker. I could have handled her differently. I know I need to talk to her about that. You didn't answer my question. It hurt. She was so special and one of the first to truly believe. And in hindsight, she was also right. She saw right through Walker. She was immune to his charm. And I was deaf to her warnings. Okay, local currency. When did you get away from using dollars? You like the screds? I don't understand them. They're a cryptocurrency. As much as we could, we wanted to get away from the control of international banking. But it's a made-up money. All money is made up. It only has value because we all agree on it as a medium of exchange. Everyone in Aurora agrees to use screds. And Skeltech makes sure to create a limited supply. So if we all agree to use your play money instead of dollars, the economy still works the same way? Money's only worth what you think it's worth. My mind... blown. Really? Okay. Nomad, I'm Black Hornet, whoever you are, I'm a little disappointed. I thought you were smarter than that. Alright, let's talk about Grace Maddox. Listen, I get that Maddox isn't exactly warm and friendly. Why do people hate her? They don't hate her as much as they fear humanity's evolutionary destiny. Whoa, that's a little intense. Even for you. Grace Maddox is in charge of Skeltech's transhumanist research, Project Deus. Yeah, on a personal level, she's not, you know, fun. Yeah, she's also really into herself. Sure, she's really effective. I gave her a huge budget. She wants more. You give it to her? Ayana Puri, my CFO, wouldn't let me. So Maddox cut costs. Instead of spending the time to perfect a true quantum computer, she developed a DNA-based computer that behaves like a quantum computer. And you know what she's doing with that? She plans to download her mind onto oh, that computer. Oh, boy. I know it sounds a little crazy and unbelievable, but someone will do it. And she should be first. Okay, isn't this another plot device that has been 
Well, this game came first, so... Oh, I can't think of the woman's name. But anyway, in Watch Dogs Legion, they had that woman that wanted to download her mind into a computer as well. So that she could live forever. I'm re I have to say I'm disappointed in Ubisoft. How their, their game... I mean, they just take ideas back and forth, you know, from the different games. It's like they're, they nobody really tries to make a unique game that's different from the others. I mean, th these are all similar in some way. And I'm disappointed. Let's talk about Harmony. Sometimes it seems like Harmony's the only Skeltech kid in Aurora. I don't know. Sky Larson, that was the one in Watch Dogs who had Legion. children, but most of them turned us down. It was kind of great having Harmony around. Well, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. There ain't so many kids out in a row for me to worry about. Believe me, worrying about Harmony is enough. You two seem to get along. Yeah. She treats me like another kid. She's smart, but having her around helps me see things with new eyes. But aside from her dad, she has no one else here? No. Just me. Hmm. Yeah, Sky Larson, Watch Dogs Legion. She wanted to download her mind into a computer and... Wow, and now we've got the same thing here. We've got Project... Is it Deus in this game? And Project Themis in Watch Dogs Legion? Basically the same thing with drones that preemptively can, can stop crime and whatnot. And Okay, what? Uh, you know, anyway, very disappointed. But, I have to say... It's Watch Dogs Legion that seems to have taken these these ideas because that game came out after this one. So, I'm disappointed in Legion. Let's continue, Nomad. I'm sorry. You and Paula cool now? I hope so. I've known her almost her whole adult life, you know? You're kind of her mentor. A mentor is more than a boss. More than a friend, even. I've guided her her entire career. I don't want her to feel betrayed. Well, she's here now. That's something. It's at least a start. Okay, let's talk about the virus program. You sure this virus is gonna work? Absolutely. It's not a computer virus like any other. Yes, it will hack systems controlling a sector of drones, but this virus includes an evolutionary algorithm. Uh-oh. Machine learning backdoor malware? I like my attacks a little simpler. But our opponent, the systems, they're too complex to come at them with anything less. But don't worry. Paul and I will make it work. I hope so, genius. I hope so. So do I. There's no telling what could come of this. Uh, let's talk about civilian drones. So, what does a billionaire arms dealer do? You know whenever he's not manufacturing killing machines. Skeltech is responsible for an extensive catalog of inventions over the past decades. I'm listening. Our first economically viable autonomous machine was the Skel Farmer, a harvester capable of recognizing the range and ripeness of crops. Since then, it's found unintended utility in mining and forestry. So explain to me how you got here, from farming drones to war machines. Our next invention, the Skell Transporter, was the first affordable smart delivery device, a new standard in the industry. The Skell Doctor may interest you, an advanced cousin specialized to carry sensitive medical supplies. You could easily shoot one out of the sky to steal its payload. Could be useful. Our Cherubim City and Sky models behave like mobile CCTVs capable of facial and behavioral identification and alert authorities in real time. I suggest you steer clear of them if you want to move undetected. I'll keep that in mind. My point is that I have dedicated my life to improving the human condition, relieving the population from the crushing weight of repetitive work. Well, let's see if we can make sure your legacy is intact at the end of this. Hmm. All right, let's talk about the lethal drones. Genius. I need you to tell me everything you can about all the lethal drones out there. Of course. Anything I can do to help undo what I've done. It all started with two basic military training drones. 
the incubus for ground and its airborne sister, the succubus. <laughs> they were then multi-purpose, giving birth to new models. Eamon and his flying sibling, Murmur, were taught to patrol areas in the wild. Aim and Malthus were designated for location defense. The meanest models were Anders and Stolas, search and destroy drones that the wolves just love. I'm sure they're all perfectly tailored for whatever Walker's got in mind. Go on. Behemoths are massive tank-like machines with incredible firepower. You'll mostly find them guarding infrastructure and strategic assets. Azriels, on the other hand, are long-range, high-altitude spy drones. They're capable of recon over a wide array of land and utilize heat sensors and pattern recognition to identify threats and intrusions. They aren't very well suited for battle, though. They mostly just point out targets so that strike forces can do the dirty work. Thanks, genius. Wish me luck. All right, and finally, the background on the Titan program. You know, there are so many projects and programs and so I can't even keep them straight. I mean, what I don't even know what this one is. Explain something to me. This Titan program. Why in the hell would you think it was a good idea to build giant killing machines? Aren't lethal drones enough? I recognize that smaller drones are already deadly and far more cost efficient, but I was influenced. Walker. He was always complaining that the existing drones didn't have enough media presence. These days, wars are fought on television screens. He wanted titans that could exude charisma and raise hope and simultaneously suffocate the spirit of a nation. Sounds charming. I find that once I'm given a task, my inspiration is fueled by the vacuum. I knew that what Walker wanted was entirely unnecessary for counterterrorism, but I got carried away. Now I shudder to imagine what he intended the whole time. You're not the only one. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we have had all the conversations that we can possibly have with this guy. Stay out of trouble. Focus is my forte. <laughs> okay. So all that, and I still have not gotten... the Into the Wolf's Den information. Let's try that now. I, I don't have much time. One of Walker's lackeys, one of the wolves, he... Walker beat him severely. Others have been killed. I... I don't know if they were deserting, if they were traitors. I don't know why Walker did that. That wolf, he knows something. He must. He was spotted near Ancient Harbor. You have to hurry! Okay, I still don't see that we have a plan. Talk to the wolf who deserted. Okay, do you... you don't have anything more for me, I hope. I think that's enough for this episode anyway. Let's see if we can't find that wolf. So he's out here somewhere in the wild, of course. Where else would wolves be? Okay, so, but before we go to that wolf, we need to go to the bivouac. Because what I have done between this episode and the last one is all of the side missions. Yes, that's right, all of them. I think there were about nine or something. I don't know that they're all done. And I have got a significant amount of leveling up to do. So, let's go ahead. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our panther. And you can see we have 19 points. What I have discovered... That's a mace. I'm not, that's a lot. What I have discovered is once you hit, um, I guess, level 30... Every time you level up, you get five skill points instead of just the one. So from, you know, one to 30 is just one skill point. Now I'm getting five. So that really does help the grind because they raise the, the level cap to 99. So this helps a lot. And I don't know if it increases more as you keep going, but, you know, this is a good thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead, hopefully, and max out everything. 
So let's go ahead then. We'll get the convoy upgrade. I'm just going to start at the top and work down. Revivalist. See, and these are perks that I'm probably never going to use. Alright, here's a passive ability water filter. I'll take that. Okay, rations level 3. Okay, here's this slide control thing. This is good. Although we don't use stamina in this version of our game. Uh, here's another passive stamina regen. Adrenaline perk. Cold blooded. Feel no pain. All these perks. Alright, we are. Right, let me make sure I get the important ones in case because we're running low. Um, let's do this iron lungs thing for the sniping. These are more perks. What is this? It's a passive, 40% less stamina. We don't have much left. Let's go ahead. I prefer the passive. That's, you know, working in the background. Drone cooldown. Oh, yeah. Let me get this resource detection. And then we'll go ahead and get the drone cooldown. What's ballistic advantage range and handling? Gunslinger. And... Oh, we almost maxed it out. Uh, we'll go ahead and take... What's this? this is the intel grenade. I will take this uh, sensor hack. Alright, so we just have one more we get our next perk point we will have maxed out everything in the panther class tree uh oh so we're getting close to doing weapon mastery now something else that they've added All right, so I just want to make these exclamation points go away alright so where are we Okay, so it should be Cold Walker and just to, th these were the side missions, none left, all done, all done. So all this stuff here on this side is done. I'm not sure about Grace Maddox though, it seems like, yeah, these two we might visit again. Alright, so we are about to go and talk to this wolf. find where he's hiding. Okay, right here. Whaler's Bay. Uh, I don't know about going on this island. <laughs> Let's go. We'll go to Small Valley Bivouac. Also, and I know I said in one of my earlier videos I was going to talk over the helicopter motor, but I did go ahead and buy a, a weaponed helicopter. It now has Mark II rockets. That was uh, like 45,000 credits, but uh, you know we needed it. It was time for the upgrade. Oh, it 
also block someone too. Explosion in the middle of the road. Oh, here comes somebody else. A dead body found it. They're just going to keep going. Wow. It looks like they're going even faster. They must be scared. Search for him in the ancient harbor. Uh-oh, we've got wolves everywhere. Seriously, I cannot get in the... in the building. That's, that's fine, you know what, game? There we go. I guess you just can't do it crouched. Drone out. Ooh. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Well, this is not good. Interesting how these ghosts, these wolves, have these deep voices. Like, oh boy, are we in trouble now? advocate for info. So let's go over here and get this. deal with all these wolves though. I think this would probably work better as a night mission. I keep hearing voices. It sounds like they're over to the left too. Kill the wolf that uh, I'm here to talk to once I start my attack.
Oh, they heard me. No threat ID. Expanding grid. Okay, before I talk to him, let me go get these skill credits. See, I have my priorities. Because who knows what might happen. You know, this could all be a trap and... I might die or have to run. And I won't be able to get the credits. Alright, let's do an, our investigation. G36C and I'm so I'll be right with you sir let me uh check this collectible Walker's journal hmm interesting okay what have you got to tell me now aren't you looking riled are you running from somebody or to somebody Laugh all you can. Have you thrown down with that son of a bitch, Walker? <sighs> a few weeks back, he caught some of us breaking the rules. Did you guys ever hear the one where Little Red Riding Hood goes into the forest? But this time, <laughs> she's read the fairy tale. So she brings a really, really big gun. <laughs> so she's headed to Grandma's. And what do you know? Big bad wolf grabs her. And he says, No, I got you. And I'm gonna screw you on and on. Hey, hey, Will. So Little Red pulls out her gun. She hikes up her skirt. And she says, No way. You're gonna eat me, just like the fairy tale. <laughs> Attention! Y'all having fun? Wolves, huh? The elite. Best of the best. But here you are. You drunk. Fraternizing with civilians. And how about you, you pathetic piece of shit? You just let that woman take your weapon. We were just... We're just trying to relax, sir. <laughs> Well, shit. I'm sorry. I would not want to get in the way of you trying to relax. And the pistol's not loaded, sir. Shit seems loaded to me. What do you think? You think you belong in my wolves? You think you belong on my battlefield? Well, let's see.
fast. I've never seen a man move that fast. If I hadn't run, I'd be dead. He killed the others. Hmm, <laughs> he's got a habit of killing his own men. Yeah, he's got a habit of killing his own men. Wow. He sure holds us to a high standard. He moved house after that little incident. Walker's a guy with a very clear idea of what an American soldier should be. That's not the only line you crossed. What's Walker's plan? You'll find the answers you're looking for in the Wolves HQ. It's to the south. It's called Shark Base. I'm only telling you this so that my friends don't have to hunt you down. Have fun dying. So, what am I supposed to do with this guy? Alright, let's look at our shark base photo intel that he's given us. The wolf shark base, it looks to be an old Cold War submarine base. The only way to access it is via boat. I suppose we'll let him live. And do we have boats over here? Because it looks like the base... No, it can't be just across the river. I think it's a lot further. Let's look at the map. I'm trying to see. All right, we will go over here then to Emilus, Emilius Arms Bivouac. Not sure if I should have killed that guy or not, though. Because there's no harm in showing mercy. All right, folks, we will continue with Into the Wolves' Den next time.